All right. I call this work session meeting of the San Marcos City Council to order. It is Monday, October 2nd of 2023. The time is 3.01 p.m. We moved our meeting to today because National Night Out is tomorrow at our regular uh, meeting time. Mr. Vino, let's call the roll. Mr. Prather. Mr. Scott. Here. Mr. Gleason. Here. Mary Houston. Here. Ms. Garza. Mr. Gonzalez. Here. And Mr. Mendoza. Here. We have a quorum present. All right, and this would usually be our citizen comment time period, but we don't have anyone signed up, so right. I won't read all the rules, and we will go right into item one. Mr. Vino. Mm -hmm. Providing staff presentation, whole discussion related to a proposed vacant structure, artistic board up ordinance for futures, council consideration, and provide direction to the city manager. Ms. Reyes. Good afternoon, Mayor and I don't, are you on? We have two presentations for you this afternoon on topics addressing strategic goals you discussed at the beginning of the year. The first briefing will outline an initiative to address abandoned or vacant structures across our community. The city has requirements to have vacant and abandoned structures boarded to prevent illegal entry. Our requirements do their job to keep the structures secure. However, they do not address the look and the negative effect it can have on the neighborhood. From a beautification standpoint, artistic boarding helps to lessen the impact the structure has on the surrounding neighbors. The following presentation from Greg Carr, Neighborhood Enhancement Director, will explain what artistic boarding actually is and how we might apply it in San Marcos. We seek council's direction on whether or not you would like to move forward with an ordinance, ordinance requiring artistic boarding. Thank you, and I will now turn it over to Mr. Carr. Good afternoon, Greg Carr, Director of Neighborhood Enhancement, and this will be quick. We're just going to talk about what artistic board up is, and um, as Ms. Reyes said, we have boarding standards now, and the most common method is a piece of plywood. Cut it, and they put it up. They don't paint it. They don't do anything to it, so it looks bad when it goes up, and then as it ages, it looks even worse. Um, so by adding artistic board up to our current standards, it just keeps things and neighborhoods more appealing. So artistic board up, it's a fancy name, I don't know what else we could call it, but um, it's like for like representation and we'll have some examples as we go through. But if you board a door, it should look like the door. If it board a window, it should look like the window. Um, and these are very basic. Um, paint requirements that can be done by the property owner, and you can go above and beyond and we'll see some examples. Like I said, the owners can do it themselves. There is a vinyl, kind of like the wrap you put on a car that you can buy. We do have a couple local um, sign shops that can provide that. Um, we've talked with the um, art board and we'll have some local artists that uh, somebody can hire if they want to do it. Uh, and don't want to do it themselves. There's an acrylic product out there. Um, it's kind of expensive, but it is an option. And then they also have a, the mur mural option. As always, we'll provide assistance. Um, if you direct us to go forward, we'll have a web page with all the requirements, uh, where they can get vinyl, where they can contact local artists, and then examples of what we're talking about uh, outside of the ordinance. Outreach will be done, and of course, as always, again, we'll, there'll be help available for those that can't afford it or can't do it themselves for health reasons or whatever it might be. So here's our current examples. Just got three of them for you. Kind of dark here, um, but it, in your packet, it should show up good. It just shows these things stick out in a neighborhood um, easily know that they're boarded. Then we take a look at some of the examples where before and after, where you can see that the home was boarded and then what a simple um, artistic boarding, what difference that makes. I like this one. So this is an abandoned garage. It looks like there's a garage door and they secured it. Here's are getting more than just the windows. They're painting uh, scenery and stuff. 
is a good one. It shows just a simple design, but it makes a big difference. Another one. Again, another uh, little more than just the door and window. They get some graphics. This. Yeah, they they got really creative. So it looked like awnings, and I believe it's this one. They have like. They, it must have been a bait and tackle shop at one point because it's got like, you know, bait and the, the ads that you'd paint on the windows. So yeah. it's really kind of cool. This is an example of the uh, clear boarding. It's preferred by public safety because you can actually see in the house if there's a window and stuff. But it's very, very costly and I don't think we're going to get a lot of people doing it. So we have partnered, our downtown has partnered with some vacant buildings um, to go above and beyond where they've really made mm -hmm. it look um, good. So I've got these two examples here. And it just goes to show you what do, doing other than just boards um, can do. So this does uh, meet one of our strategic goals for uh, programs to address vacant and neglected buildings. Just asking three things of you tonight or today. Um, do we have a thumbs up to move forward? If so, then we'll bring back an ordinance. Um, do we want to charge a permit fee? And this is something we've talked internally about. We're not here to make money off of this because it's really a benefit to the community to get this looking good. So we really would prefer not to charge a permit fee. We would still have to charge the uh, technology fee, but not a permit fee. And then the last question is just only allow basic, which is the like for like, or like some of the, the examples showed where they had the awnings and stuff where you can get creative. And that's it. Told you it'd be short. Okay. Council, what are your thoughts? I am thrilled. Mr. Scott? Yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. Um, what about people that can't afford it? I mean, some of these houses are inherited, and uh, maybe they can't afford it because they're older and they haven't passed it down yet. Have yeah. we have we'll, a wraparound for that? We'll treat it like we do everything else in the same. Be doing it for them. They say, even I can paint the simple one. It's pretty okay. easy. And uh, for some of them, they just really that won't make a difference if you work with the fire department and have maybe a controlled burn. That was hard to say, seriously. Well, we are working on the, our demolition programs getting ramped up, and so some of these um, that we've had issues where we've been waiting on, we should be seeing a lot more. I believe we talked about it during the community enhancement fee, but we'll be seeing a lot more coming down that need to come down. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the question I have, can people use it as billboards? Uh, to advertise for another business or something like that? No, that would be a sign. So we do have, if it's something other than just the like for like, meaning there's going to be some a mural or some sort of artistic design on it, then uh, our staff that's on the mural board committee, will they'll be part of the permit review just to make sure that it's nothing crazy. Because that would become an off-premises sign, which a, there's rules sign. about. But if it met those rules, Correct. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. It's just beauties in the eye of the beholder. You know. Correct. But yeah, I'm all for it. I think this is a great idea. I think it's yeah. something that we need to do. You know, this is better than a yeah. weathering sheet of plywood. I, I agree. Mr. Mendoza? Uh, this is fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm in full support. Okay, so the first question is, do we move forward? And those are yeses. The second is, do we charge a permit fee? I'll say how I feel about permit fees, and I used to have this argument with Ron Patterson years ago. We, we had fences. We had regulations about fences, but you didn't have to get a permit. And I said, Ron, getting, having to get the permit, even if it's $5, allows you the conversation to say, this is, this is how we do this. And so I think we should charge a permit fee just so we have that conversation with them. But I'm okay with it being a very 
low amount. And I, I apologize, I should have been, there will be a permit attached to this, so they will have to get a permit. Okay. So whether we charge $1 or $100, yeah. doesn't matter, they still have to get the permit. Okay. And then to your question, if it's any artistic stuff, it will go through a board for review for that. Yeah, okay. So they will need a permit, but, okay. Okay, so where are y'all on a, a fee knowing that there does need to be a permit? I, I want to see it be super low, you know, that minimal cost, you know, something that everybody can afford. That. Does it cost more to collect $5 than the $5? Well, we have a technology fee that's added on top of any permit fee. Which is so $12, I, something like 11 or 12 13 somewhere around that. It's not much. Um, I would be happy with just charging that fee but, and that's, but, yeah, that's okay. fine I, by me I think yeah. that's I was thinking the $20 I mean I feel like this is something for the community yeah. that is yes. to enhance the community and it's something we're asking so it's a way of the city showing partnership and saying yes. hey you've got to have the permit just so we can make sure we authorize you know you to move forward right. but it's nothing that we're going to charge you for other than the technology fee yeah. so that we can have you do this so that's that yeah. was the, the conversation we had internally okay so are y'all good with zero on the permit and the technology yes. fee Actually, being Mayor, what it is. Great. I do have one question about the uh -huh. permits though. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Carr, is it one permit for building or would it be broken up into one permit for the door, one permit for the windows? For the property. For the property itself. So even if it's a 12,000 square foot warehouse, it's the same as a 2,000 square foot yes. house. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Mayor, I'm okay with a very low or no permit fee for this. Okay. Mr. Gonzalez? With since, uh, well, we're talking I'm, about the fee right now. Right. So where are you yeah. on the fee? On the fee, uh, yeah, just keep it as low as possible. I'm good. Okay, so the fee would be zero, and then we've got that less than fifteen dollars technology fee that we'll just call the permit fee, kind of right. sort of. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Did you have something else? Because uh, I've still got two more questions to ask. No. Go ahead and ask the questions. Uh, do we want these to be basic, which is paint a door where a door goes, window where, or to do something more for artistic expression? One of the things when I brought this up to two previous city managers, and I finally gave up, never brought it up to, to Ms. Reyes, but on the, the building that is Guadalupe and, and Hopkins Street, the two-story brick building, some of us know it is the Duke and Ayers building, some know it is the ballet company. But my thought is not just a window, but make it look like you're looking in there, like a, a little round table with a vase of flowers or something more than just the window. So that's what you're talking about when it says artistic expression. Correct. That would be the curtains and the lamp or whatever, yeah. more than just the... Uh... Right. Door window, yes. Okay. So I uh, need to know if y'all are the basic or artistic expression. We're very artistic here. Yeah. And and this will be run through the the, the mural arts folks who have access to the artists and et cetera. Correct. Well, I, I think, thank you, Mr. Carr. You're right. We're a very artistic community, and I think this is another way for us to beautify, not, again, not just downtown, but mm -hmm. everywhere we have this out. And just so you're a yes on the artistic absolutely expression? Absolutely, yes, ma'am. Okay. You done here? Yeah, I'm fine for allowing it, sure. Okay. I'll mandate it, but... And we're talking allowing, not... Correct. Mandating. Allowing. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just clearing up for the public. I don't know. We had an artistic car out in front of Planet K for years that didn't go very well as a community, so I'm not sure what levels of artistic, you know, are we going towards? Are there, you know, limitations on that? Whose perception of artistic is not the same that's as... That's why I got the experts on the panel to review yeah. it and not me. Okay. So, so it would go along with kind of the so way they go ahead and do make murals that. and stuff so that... Yeah. It, so but, the, but the, the final voice on it then? Yes. Okay. But, but it still needs to look like, if it's a window, it's something you might see inside a house, right? Correct. Or like that one business okay. where they painted the awning I mean, and the stuff. Yeah. It makes okay. a big difference, really. Right. Mr. Gonzalez? I'm fine with You're good with artistic... And Shane, you're good with artistic with the, okay. Then we think this is fabulous. We want to charge as little as possible. I do have a question, and that is for businesses, would this qualify for any of our grant programs that we have? 
and and we don't have to have that response now, but that's going to be a question that, that I would have that would also help um, get this done if we go, I think most of those are halves. Not, um, not for the boarding, because that's something that should be pretty minimal. Well, the, um, and the boarding is re required, but to add, but to do the thing that we're asking to them to add. Art artistic, let us look into that, Mayor, and just okay. let us get a response back. Now, when okay. we, I talked artistic to Josie credit. about that, mm -hmm. so the building you mentioned with the windows up mm -hmm. above, they wouldn't be eligible for the boarding of it, Correct. but they would be eligible to replace the windows that should be there so it looks well, like the building is supposed to be. Right. So, okay. the, but for the artistic expression, whatever those costs might be, uh, y'all will let us know when, when. And so, well, this this comes back as an ordinance at some point in time, and we'll know that answer, which won't be in the ordinance, but we'll know the answer to that. I think that's great. Okay. Anything else? I'm so excited about this. I can hardly stand it. Yeah, I am too. So, Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you, Ms. Reyes. Is there anything else you need from us? Okay, then we will move on to item two, Ms. Trevino. Receive a staff presentation regarding the city's partnership with Austin Community College and a pro pro proposed lease agreement to provide workforce training courses and provide direction to the city manager. Sorry. Ms. Reyes. Our next presentation is an update regarding the city's partnership with Austin Community College <coughs> and a proposed lease agreement to provide additional workforce training <coughs> courses for our community. The city currently partners with Austin Community College to offer training courses using the library facility. The location we're proposing to be utilized is across the street in Building 2, the location of our former fleet base. ACC has requested a few improvements to the space that can be covered with American Rescue Plan funding Council has already allocated. Hayden Miggle, Assist Administrative Services Director, Manager, will be providing, if I can get your title right, huh? <laughs> Administrative Services Manager will be providing the presentation, and we also have Don Tracy, ACC's Director of Corporate and Community Education with us, if you have any specific questions about their course offerings. I'm now going to turn it over to Administrative Services Manager, Hayden Miggle. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Hayden Miggle, Administrative Services Manager. I'm excited to provide you with an update today on the city's partnership with ACC and a proposed lease agreement to potentially expand the workforce training courses they provide in our community. This effort addresses the economic vitality goal discussed by city council and staff in January. This specific strategy is to invest city funding to mitigate gaps and barriers that have been identified in education and workforce development, including a possible training location. The city has partnered with ACC for a few years to provide workforce training out of the library. Most recently in August, 15 students graduated with their HVAC Level 1 certificate. Many students worked full-time, supported families, and still attended class every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for 20 weeks. The class was taught by local HVAC professional Chris Bain, and resume and job search assistance was provided by workforce librarian Deborah Carter. When this class was announced in January of this year, we received over 100 applications with 16 students selected and 15 students completing the coursework and passing the certification exam. With the success of this class and HVAC jobs in high demand, Community Action and ACC are on board for a new class starting this fall. City staff have been in discussions with ACC regarding an alternate location that would better accommodate the classroom and practical components of the courses and allow them to possibly expand their workforce training offerings in San Marcos. Initial discussions were that space at the former San Marcos Electric Utility or SMU facility on Highway 123 may serve that purpose. City Council allocated $240,000 in 2022 from American Rescue Plan funding in order to make the necessary renovations to the site. As we have gone through the facility planning process, it was determined that space could be utilized by city departments. The completion of the public service complex and relocation of some city departments has vacated the former fleet bays located in Municipal Building 2, across the street from City Hall. The area is highlighted in green on the map. This location would allow ACC to have easier access to the self-made racks they utilize to teach students in locations away from their campuses. 
ACC has toured this location and stated it should work even better than the Highway 123 location. In addition to the former Fleet Bays area, ACC would utilize one room upstairs that can serve as a classroom away from disruptions on the floor. The city has no immediate plans for use of this area. The city sees the potential of additional courses as a benefit to the community. We are still working on some of the details of the agreement, but one item that ACC has offered in return is providing a limited number of spots in some courses at no cost to the city. Since the remainder of Building 2 will continue to be utilized by city staff, some access improvements are necessary. In addition, ACC has requested some upgrades to, to the facility, primarily additional electrical outlets and lighting that would offer them greater flexibility to offer courses. The access, electrical, and lighting upgrades are proposed to be paid for with the previously mentioned American Rescue Plan funding that was set aside in Tranche 2 to renovate the former SMU facility to serve as a workforce training center. The lease agreement is currently in review by ACC and the city, and we anticipate it being placed on an agenda for council consideration in the next couple months. As City Manager Reyes mentioned, Mr. Don Tracy, ACC's Director of Corporate and Community Education, is also here this afternoon in case you have any questions regarding their programs. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Council, and I'm so happy that my friend Don Tracy is here. He does magical things when given the opportunity, and he finds opportunities. So um, I'm going to go out front and say I think this is fabulous. It's going to be so good for our community. And uh, y'all have heard me say, and I think I heard Don say it the first time, is someone with a full-time job with benefits is a game changer for the family. It's better than two or three part-time jobs with no benefits. And that's what ACC works to get people. If they put in the work, ACC helps them get there. So thank you, Don, for all that you do. Um, yeah, uh, look, anytime we can expand educational opportunities, especially through non-traditional students, as someone who attended community college, these kind of programs are great and really do change people's lives. So. Um, the only question I have is, is um, on the funding portion of it. Are we going to need that whole additional uh, tranche that we allowed, uh, that we allocated for this? Is it? Do you think it's going to cost that much to renovate the building? It shouldn't cost that entire amount. Okay. At least the initial estimates, and we're still kind of gauging what's necessary for the access and okay. what's okay. necessary for the improvements. But we think it should be covered within that original allocation. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm in all support of this, and uh, and I look forward to moving forward. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think it's a great idea as well. Uh, the question I had, we talked about the HVAC level one, which I don't know what that is, but are y'all going to expand and go into other voca uh, vocational uh, trades like uh, plumbing and uh, electrical and things of that nature? Is that just plan as well? Yeah, absolutely. We currently run in a number of different locations. Uh, we currently run HVAC, welding, plumbing, Perfect, yeah. automotive, um, truck driving. Uh, <clears throat> we even think back in the back area we could do the backing uh, procedures for truck driving. Yeah. So I think we can we can accommodate at least those five and maybe more. Believe it or not, those trades are going to pay so well. That's right. Uh, give it a, a few more years because not too many people are doing that. And one of one of the things that we're really proud of in the in the work that we're doing, and, and Mayor Houston sort of alluded to this. Um, we've trained hundreds and hundreds over the last several years in these skilled trades, and we have about a 95% placement rate. Uh, we have partnerships with, a, with about 100 different companies around Central Texas, and I, I'll tell you one of the keys for us in ensuring that our students um, have employment is we bring the employers into the classroom. Uh, almost every night we have other new employers in the classroom meeting the students and pitching to the students what it's like to come work for them. And so by the time our students are done with, with their program, they've got a job. Great. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, staff, mm -hmm. thank you so much. And ACC for keeping that relationship so uh, beautiful there. I will say as somebody who went to the, uh, took a couple of ACC courses right after high school at the old freshman building at the old high school. <laughs> so that's a while back there. Yeah. But this is something that will 
allow my neighbors and all of our neighbors here to just be on that equal plane there to just thrive. And I thank you so much. I will say I was so impressed to hear that 100 applicants were for this last class. That mm -hmm. is, that shows you there's a need and there is a want. Just yeah. thank you so much for everybody to be involved. Well, this is what we call in my day vocational training. Yeah. But this is wonderful because you go to work soon, reasonable pay, really good pay, depending, yeah. and pretty much nothing on the student loan situation, um, or very little. Um, Ms. Reyes, would you please extend our thanks to Ms. Inslee and others at the library? <coughs> because I know that's where a lot of programs have been going on and will continue to go on in, in the workforce area. So I don't want to forget them because they, they're doing a great job over there. But Thank this you. is just going to magnify uh, what we're doing in San Marcos. So can I put everybody down for a yes? Yes. yes yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Unanimous yes. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Thank you, Mr. Meagle, for all that you're working on because I know that's what's going to make it happen. Thank you. And I do want to um, give a shout out to Mr. Meagle because he picked this up. It was uh, something Kelsey Jordan Lee was working on before mm -hmm. she left, and also Sandra Valenzuela, our grants coordinator, had worked on. And he really, you know, has picked this up and taken this across the finish line. Uh, we've heard from council for a while that you wanted more of an east side workforce center, and so we've looked for a way to try to do that. I know it's on the west side because it's over here, but we tried to make sure that we were minimizing barriers by having a bus stop and things like that yes. in terms of transportation. So uh, there are those things that have been done with, with intentionality. So very much appreciate Mr. Miggle for uh, carrying this over the finish line and getting us here and Mr. Tracy as well. So thank you. Yeah, I think having this across the street from the library is, is extremely helpful. So even though we are on this side of the interstate, we're not that far. We're not that far. Um, Mr. Tracy. Yeah, just one other quick thing. Um, I do want to say thank you to Deborah Carter and the whole team over at the, at the mm -hmm. library. You know, we've had a couple of different HVAC classes already there. have been very successful. We've got another one coming up in this month, later on this month. We've also been running accounting and bookkeeping with the QuickBooks certification. And we just started, a, interestingly, we just started a leadership, uh, individual leadership class, and we're teaching that class in Spanish. And so that's about communications and personal leadership and, and growth. And so, um, you know, we've got some things that are going on over there, and those things will continue there mm -hmm. in the trades over, over here on this side. Will really, uh, this facility will really help us expand that. So we're looking forward to it. Good news all around today. That's this right. has been great. It's good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Ms. Reyes, is there anything else you need from us? Okay. And uh, then, uh, Mr. Vino, let's read item three. Executive session in accordance with the following. The City Council will convene in executive session pursuant to the following. Is sessions. your microphone on? Yes. Oh, I'm going to put it over here. <clears throat> of the Texas Government Code, A section 551.071, consultation with attorney to receive advice of legal counsel regarding pending litigation concerning the title to an alleyway located near the intersection of University Drive and CM Allen Parkway in cost number 23-0339 in District Court of Hayes County, 207 Judicial District Court. B, section 551.071, consultation with attorney to receive advice of legal counsel regarding pending litigation regarding um, Eric Cervini et al. versus Chase Stapp, Brandon um, Winkenwerder, Matthew Danzer, and the City of San Marcos Civil Action Number 121-CV-00568-RP in the United States District Court, Western District of Texas, Austin Division. Okay, looking for a motion to go into executive session. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Move. <laughs> I have a, a motion for Mr. Scott. I'm looking for a second. I'll second it. I have a second for Mr. Gleason, and we get to vote with our little push buttons hey. today. Oh, hold on, so they're ready. Um, when, when they're flashing, they're ready, right? Yes. Okay. All right. They're ready. The motion passes five to zero with two absent. All righty. Then council, we will be going to the uh, large conference room. And if you would, let's go directly there. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, all that monopoly stuff. Returned. 
to our meeting at 4.06. And Mr. Vino, we don't have anyone signed up for Q&A, correct? No, ma'am. Okay, then I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Scott, seconded by Mr. Gleason, and we will vote by pushing our buttons. Mm -hmm. When they flash is when they will be accepting votes. Motion passes seven to zero. All right. <laughs> so I will adjourn at 4.06.